From San Antonio, Texas, home of the Alamo, the Riverwalk, and the World Heritage San Antonio Missions, this is the Exit Planning Coach Podcast with John F. Dini. Designed to help advisors who work with business owners, John talks with top professionals in the exit planning field about best practices, marketing tips, and how to be more effective when working with owners. Now, here's John F. Dini. Hi there, and welcome to the Exit Planning Coach Podcast. Uh, glad you dropped in again. My guest today is Tom Jordan. Uh, Tom has a, a lot of different skills, and the bio you sent me, Tom, pretty much says Tom's a real smart guy, which I knew already. But you know, can you can you fill us in a little bit about where you came from and how you got here? Yeah, sure, John. Uh, th- thanks for having me. By the way. Uh, my my journey is not any more unique than any other uh, journey, I would assume. But my uh, my my background before I got involved in working with business owners uh, for um, you know my background really started in working with uh, financial institutions and helping them develop non qualified uh, long term retention and incentive plans mm-hmm. uh, for their key employees and also directors. And uh, did that for, I mean, I, that was all I did for probably a little over 20, 22, 23 years, going way back into the mid-90s. Got real good at it, uh, represented a really, uh, a really good organization at the time uh, called M Financial, and I actually helped them build the platform for community bank marketing and, uh, and these executive benefit plans. What I, what I did for all those years um, required me to eventually get to the board for a presentation. The board needed to approve my value proposition. And, and as you can probably imagine, uh, I might be working with the management uh, team of a bank for uh, a year or two, but when I get to the board, they give me, you know, like 20 minutes, you know, nice. kind of thing. And so it uh, it was uh, it was a learning experience, and fortunately, I I got yeses more than I got noes over over that period of time. But w- one of the things that I noticed during that period, especially towards the end of the of the twenty some year stretch, uh, was that the 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 members of the boards of these banks, and I've worked with uh, close to two hundred of them over that mm-hmm. time, and. The members of these community banks um, are uh, business owners, predominantly business owners in those small communities. And uh, I kept getting owners coming up to me after the presentation and and the congratulations. uh, And they would say, hey, can you come and talk to me about my business? And for several years, I just ignored that. I, I just I didn't think I had any real opportunity there. Didn't want to step out of my lane, uh, the bank lane, uh, that much. And uh, <clears throat> but then I, I I had a change in in just um, my vision, I think, and that is I began hearing and reading and and you know attending conferences about this baby boomer tsunami, mm-hmm. uh, and that was a term that was has been bannered around for years and years. And I kind of looked at that and I said, well, gosh. Um, you know, when you look at the segment of business owners who were part of that tsunami, um, there, there might be an opportunity there. So, and I was also at a stage in my career when I, I wanted to travel less because I was on an airplane for years, Monday morning at 6 a.m. at the airport, and I'd be back Thursday night, you know, kind yeah. of thing, week after week. And so I, I really dug in and discovered this this idea, this concept called exit planning. And it really wasn't um, a, a known discipline or a subcategory of you know, business planning at the time. Um, uh, the organizations that support uh, exit planning today were, were in their infancy, but I, I continue to study, realize that I perhaps had an opportunity there. So I uh, I made the big plunge uh, into exit planning, I guess, close to 12 years ago. Uh, joined a couple of organizations and uh, thought I was going to immediately, every business owner I talked to was going to want to talk about exit planning, right? <laughs> oh, and, sure. <laughs> uh, and, uh, 
And uh, you know, I, I you should you have know, taken a you should have taken a sideline and funeral pre planning. Absolutely, same skill. yeah. Probably would have been busier and more successful, <laughs> right? But you know, it it didn't take me long to realize that not every owner wants to talk about exit planning, nor are they really ready to to exit. Mm -hmm. And so um, that opened up a whole new av avenue because what I was hearing over and over and over when I was talking to uh, potential clients is this idea of I've got to get my business right. I've got mm -hmm. to get, I've got to build value. I have to get things, some things internally fixed. And I said, okay, well, that, that is, that's an interesting. And I began talking the value creation game a little bit more in my, you know, approaches. And lo and behold, instead of, you know, two of every 10 owner, owners that I would talk to that was interested, now all of a sudden it was six or seven owners mm -hmm. out of every 10. And um, I realized that I had I had to not only just have an exit planning flag to wave, but I needed some sort of combination of exit planning and value building. Uh, <clears throat> and went off and, and discovered and checked out all the tools that were available at the time and, and settled in on the value builder. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, profile or value builder system. My market is Main Street. I'm not in the in the upper mid markets. My average client is anywhere between, you know, five and 25 million revenue, 15 plus 50 to employees. And I felt value builder would serve my needs, you know, better than some of the more sophisticated platforms out there. Uh, and then I needed something uh, on the exit planning side. And that's when I uh, discovered Exit Map with you, mm -hmm. and uh, realized that that I had two very, just very good complementary systems uh, that I could really make some hay with. And so that's been the progression. It went from you know e executive benefit planning for banks, and if any of you have worked in banks, you know that every T needs to be crossed and every I needs to be dotted. And so I grew up sort of in that culture, in that world, and I, I really applied the same concepts to what I uh, am doing now in exit planning and value planning, and they they overlap so much. And um, and so that's really the the journey. And what I find interesting is when I get involved with an owner, whatever gateway I went through, usually whether it's a, a value gateway or an exit planning gateway. And by the way. Yeah, I, I use the term exit readiness, just like the assessment. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't say, and I always make sure that they know I'm not a broker. I'm not the guy right. that's going to sell your business. But here's one thing I, I've discovered, um, and I, I, I like this, is my my old skills of, of retention planning, long-term retention planning, mm -hmm. uh, was easily transferable to, to the business environment outside of my bank environment. So even though I don't market uh, very specifically executive comp work anymore, I end up doing a lot of it as you know an additional offshoot or an additional project in how I'm working with the owners at the time. Yeah, um, and you know your model is not unusual in our world because you know we we don't cross over. And I know you're a SEPA, and you know for the for the SEPAs. Um, you know, they have the three gates and in, in that methodology. And, and we are in the first gate and we do not go into the second gate and really value builder. And we have, you know, we know Laura and Sam and John very well. Great, great mm -hmm. folks, great product and mouse and capitalize and EOS and, you know, scaling up. There's a whole bunch of stuff in that second phase of implementation. Uh, but you've gone you've gone even further than that because I see that you're doing a lot with half retire, which yeah. is really interesting. You've kind of put it all together. Tell us tell us about clarity about your process there. Well, uh, and and I want to emphasize the word process because this stuff doesn't just appear overnight. But you right. know, you try, you trial and error over time, and you kind of find things that work, and then you keep tweaking and keep you know creating and. And uh, one of the things I found uh, 
and and with the business owners that that I would have conversations with um, is this idea that either they're 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 afraid to go to sell, they know they 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 they're not ready, and quite frankly, many of them don't want to sell. They want to have some sort of status where they maybe you know check in, run the you know have the business running on its own essentially. And they want to be able to take the proverbial, you know, time off. Whereas, you know, all owners that we encounter, you know, they're 60, 70, 80 hour guys and have been for, sure. you know, ever. And so they reach a point in their life where they want something different. They're either bored to death or they're, they don't want to give up the business. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and this is right along with the value builder acceleration methodology. At the end of it, there's a keep or sell. Right. There's right. a keep or sell uh, a decision make decision tree. And I, you know, I kind of looked at that and I said, well, what would happen? Because uh, I'm assuming, OK, every owner I'm going to engage is eventually going to want to exit and I'm going to do all this value building and it's going to be great. And then they're going to sell their business. And I keep looking at this keep thing you know, that's on the uh, the methodology. And and I said, what what does that look like? What happens if an owner goes through and some analysis and planning and that and, and just really says, look, I know I'm going to exit. I know, you know, it's it's either going to be with a plan or on a stretcher or, okay. you know, some point in between. But until then, why can't I do this? And so this has become what I call half retire. And it's it's a it's a platform that um uh, owners are just crazy about. Uh, I mean, the response that I'm getting from that is more than any any other message that I put out there mm. in webinars, in my outbound mail uh, process, on my LinkedIn marketing. I'm getting the largest response in this concept of half retire. Well, let me hold you up for a second there. We're going to stop for a word as we do in the middle, sure. and then we're coming right back. And I, I do want to spend most of the rest of our time talking about how half retire works. How would your practice survive if only 25% of your clients were happy with your work? How many referrals would you get? Would you advertise that success rate? Over the last decade, both the Exit Planning Institute and PwC have surveyed owners and found that 75% were profoundly unhappy a year after their exits. In 10 years, the exit planning industry has done little to fix this issue. Business owners need purpose, direction, and activity after exiting. Planning for that starts with your very first coaching conversation. We work with advisors who believe that clients should be happy after exiting. ExitMap is a structured discovery process that helps you have deeper conversations about client options, objectives, and life after the business. We help you launch better transitions. Take a test drive at ExitMap.com. Welcome back to the Exit Planning Coach Podcast. I'm here with Tom Jordan. Exodus Complink is his company. Uh, Clarity is his process where he's combined the half retire skills with the value builder skills with the exit map uh, tools. And uh, we're talking about how he, that entire system works, especially half retire. Tom, before we go forward, uh, you know, we work in a team environment. Everybody's got to have more than one person on their planning team. If people want to get a hold of you for compensation or for half retire help or anything, uh, please get, it'll be on the, on the podcast, of course, but please give us your information for those listening in their car or something. Thank, thank you, John. Tom.Jordan at exoduscomplink.com. Uh, that's also my website and, uh, you can reach me at 210-772-1086. I work nationally, even though I live uh, in San Antonio with John. I don't live with John. You don't, we, no, we don't to clarify that, please. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I do work nationally, but I'll tell you one change that I've made and it's been a pleasant change is I don't do any traveling anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. and COVID helped me in that. That was a silver lining. And then some personal issues uh, with family, medical issues with family have really grounded me in a very nice way. So all the work I do now is virtual, um, which I really like. I do too. Um, 
Yeah, I do too. Sure. And I'll and I'll give I'll give the same credit. I'll give the credit to COVID too. You know, as a as a former road warrior, you know, I'm getting requests for speed. You know, I still get requests for speaking and stuff. And I'm like, look, if you want me to do a webinar, I'd be happy to. But that's as far as it's gonna go. That's it. Yeah. yeah that's it. I've turned I've turned down or had to turn down, you know, two or three invitations a year to speak to the organizations that feed me into their membership for various things. And uh, I just say, no, it's got to be a webinar uh, for sure, or I can't come. But um, anyway, that's how you can get in touch with me. I do work a lot collaboratively with other advisors, uh, with SEPA advisors. Uh, there are a couple of other organizations that I'm, I'm propped up as a subject matter expert mm -hmm. uh, in the various areas. And uh, but predominantly, most of my business comes from my own effort uh, with with my own marketing and and referrals. Hey, let's. I'd like to talk a little bit more about half retire. Tell tell us about that system, please. The concept I didn't create it, and John, you know me well enough to know I am not the creator of stuff. You are, but I am. A, I have a keen eye on finding stuff that is good, and uh, and so I. I found a, a platform called Half Retire by a guy out of uh, Indianapolis who's kind of a business coach. He's sort of, uh, I don't know if I'd say he's semi-retired, but you know he's had his heyday, if you will. Uh, and he still offers a platform, uh, but he's very, he's very generous in, in allowing you to sort of personalize his content. And, uh, and that's what I've done. It is I signed a licensing agreement with him and, and I've just, you know, I've, I've, I've changed things for me, uh, the way I communicate and uh, how I do things. And one of the things that I, I uh, have done this last year is I started promoting half retire in a workshop scenario. I've never done workshops before. And if, and if I did or when I did, and there were very few, uh, they were like, they were free. In other words, come to a workshop, please, please, please come to my <laughs> workshop. And I, I decided that I would um, begin promoting workshop, uh, a workshop, but charge for it. And so um, I created a, an agenda. It's, it's a six week, uh, two hour a week for six week program for owners uh, that at the end of the six weeks, they have a blueprint of their half retire. Uh, ah. they're half retired, but they have their action plan, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. And I cap the attendance at 10 uh, because I I like the I like the exchange between the owners. I'm sure. I don't present, I'm, I I facilitate conversations uh during those those sessions. I record them and I I just lather those owners up with all the other tools uh, from Value Builder and, and from Exit exit Map. In other words, I'm preparing them for private engagement after that. And mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, I charge $2,000 to attend the workshop. Mm -hmm. So um, I do five of those now a year. Um, and, you know, that's that's 20 grand a workshop. And um, and I am now engaging over half of the attenders. Wow! The workshop attenders are now moving on to private engagement with me on whatever the issue is uh, that they want to get started with. So did I come up with this from from the from scratch? No, I kind of fell into it, and it's it's something that I'm enjoying, and it's a really it's a great way for me to to really be efficient with my time. And essentially, I'm having people pay uh, pay me to qualify them for private engagement, which I kind of like. Yeah, that I like that too. I don't want to do workshops, but I really like the methodology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the you know a very very smart man um, was uh, when I was consulting in Los Angeles. Uh, he was uh, an old German, and his name was Manfred. And uh, we had a very large client call us up. I had a partner at the time. And we were like, how are we going to structure? I mean, this could be so big. How are we going to structure a proposal? You know, I don't know how to put a proposal together that encompass all the things that we could be doing with this client, you know. 
And Manfred, he was hanging out at our office just because he had nothing else to do. He was retired and he, he met my partner somehow and we'd come by and have a cup of coffee. And he said, oh, no, you do not want to do a proposal. And I said, I, we don't? And he said, no. He said, first you have to do the assessment. assessment he yeah. said, the assessment tells you what you have to put in the proposal, but you need to get paid to do the assessment so you right. know what to put in the proposal. <laughs> so exactly. that was a, a wonderful lesson that has never left me. Well, and I tell you, it works because now, even before they attend their first session, they have to take the value builder profile and the exit readiness assessment. Have to. And so I look at that, even if nothing happens after that, I've been paid $2,000 for them to take two assessments. Um, and and then I, I also use the owner centricity quiz mm -hmm. uh, in, in one of my sessions. And um, and I, it's just I'm having fun uh, because it's, it's owners that appreciate the 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 ideas that you're bringing to them. And they're very they're eager to learn. And they're they're all motivated by, you know, whatever their story is, whether it's a health issue or it's a boredom issue or if it's a fear issue or a financial one uh, where they can't retire uh, financially. They're all very eager to learn. And I like I like working with people like that. Yeah. Well, as you know, I've run peer groups for many years yep. and, you know, there is a lot of value in putting a couple smart business owners together in a room. I just had another member or one of my peer groups say to me about two weeks ago, a big, big crisis. And he said, you know, this is probably the third or fourth time that Tab has saved. Tab is the, the name of the alternative board. He said, this is the third or fourth time that this group has saved my bacon in the last 10 years. And every one of them has been worth the entire price of participating. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we're getting to wrap up here. You know, as you said, the boomers are exiting. You know, there's still 51% of all the businesses out there. 51% of business owners are, are 59 or older as yeah. of this year. Yeah. Um, and of course, with the training that's out there and the certifications, a lot more people are entering the exit planning business. And then you and, and you and I discussed it before we went, before we started on air, you know, and a lot of them are saying, okay, I got a certification. I, 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 I read the book. I did the course. How do I do this? How do I, how do I start these conversations with business owners? What tip would you give to somebody that's just starting out as an exit planning advisor. Well, it goes without saying, you know, the old rule raw get out there and just, you know, start. And <laughs> uh, and but I think you got to have it. You got to have a strategy of of putting your message out there, um, and and that strategy needs to be highly uh, supported by the technology tools that we have today. Mm -hmm. um, and, and whether you are going to focus more on inbound marketing platforms, which I have several, or outbound, uh, th I also have several, you've got to have a plan, you have to have a system, and you have to have people to talk to. And um, referrals are great, but uh, they will not fill up your calendar. It just, mm -hmm. it, it just won't. Um, and so for me, um, I, I, I did it, I guess, not in any real uh, secret way, but I do use uh, religiously the uh, the 14 uh, uh, messages uh, with. Uh, oh, X yeah, 14, the, the exam at 14 touches. Exam yeah, 14 touches. And then now the new you have a new series of there's one each month mm -hmm. uh, that is a little bit more topical um, uh, value builder, in my opinion, has a wonderful they platform do. of content that I can pick and choose and put out there. I've, I've built my my contact database now uh, after the many years, there are about close to 15,000 owners uh, across the country that receive messages from me pretty much every other week. I don't I don't I don't like I, I don't want to overdo it. Right. Um, and uh, and then I've I've learned how to use uh, virtual assistants very effectively in managing the activity. Um, and uh, I, for the first time in my life, I'm using LinkedIn as a marketing tool. I've just 
finished uh, a process that that uh, is focused on putting owners into a a twenty minute discovery session with me. Mm -hmm. based yeah, on, I saw that on, on your site. Yes, and I do that, and that that you know, I I routinely I have routinely have four, five, six of those meetings a week. Wow, uh, talking to people who. However, they found me or responded to me, they want to at least check it out and ask me questions. Um, so the Value Builder platform, I think their their nurture cycle and the content they have, uh, I, I is, is really is really great. And I'm sure the other platforms it have is. it too. No, uh, I, I just you know, and I I make no bones about my admiration for Laura Ferguson, who's the vice president of, of marketing and has developed that stuff for value builders. She's yeah. just, she's brilliant. She's just yeah. terrific. Yeah. Oh. And, um, and they so say much, nice things about us too. Uh, yeah. Well, they should. <laughs> uh, uh, that, um, and, you know, and so that, that keeps me busy. Uh, and when I say busy, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking and I don't work more than roughly 35 to 40 hours a week. Okay. I'm not into, I could, if I wanted to, I could work 60 or 70, but I'm at a stage in, in my life uh, where I like the normalcy of working that amount. Uh, and, and what gets me up every morning is I, I just love the people I'm working with. They are the diversity of business and stories and, you know, backgrounds oh, yeah. are rich. And I, I, I never get bored doing what I'm doing for, for these people, for these owners. Yeah. I, um, one of, one of my axioms is every business I work with is unique and every owner I work with is unique. And I don't know how to do the math, but I think unique times unique is like infinity. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah. there's no, no two the same. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, I appreciate your time, Tom. This has been great. Uh, congratulations on your success and your willingness to share with other people. And I hope we can get you back as we start getting into more topic-based stuff, you know, and I'll see you around town because we belong to some of the same organizations. So. <laughs> well, thanks, John. Thanks for having me, by the way. And, you know, good luck to you. And you've got a, you've got a great thing going. And uh, just keep, keep it up. Thank you, Tom.